So finally, we come to step five of the metabolic syndrome, elevated blood sugar level. Now, again, this is clearly related to insulin resistance. So what we're seeing here is a graph across the lifespan, uh, theoretical, demonstrating how insulin is becoming more and more resistant. What this means is it doesn't work as well as it used to work. So the compensatory response of the body is to release more insulin for the same effect. And if we have a look at what happens as the insulin resistance is occurring, this line here is fasting plasma glucose. We can see that fasting plasma glucose increases. Now, to appreciate how this resistance causes, uh, you have to understand that the insulin is what actually draws the sugar out of the circulation. And in a normal situation where insulin's working, it does this quite nicely. It goes into the liver, plunk a bit into the muscle, take a little bit into the fat, sure, and you're not left with an excess amount of sugar in the bloodstream. But if insulin stops working as effectively, you still take a bit of sugar up, but not as much. What you're left with is a large amount of sugar still residing within the blood vessels. Let's have a look at some uh, modern research done about 33 years ago. Uh, because we've got a really good practice in medicine of ignoring good studies and good science. This study took 10 diabetic Aborigines who all met the criteria for metabolic syndrome. They lived in urban areas and they were recruited for a seven week trial where they went to live a traditional lifestyle, eating a traditional diet, and this was conducted in the Pantajan community about an hour's light plane flight north of Derby. So what happened? So short answer, things got better. This is a graph here showing their blood glucose level. Their fasting blood glucose level on average at the start of the trial was 11.6. After seven weeks, just seven weeks, it went down to 6.6. .6. Their triglyceride level at the start was 4.02, and after seven weeks it went down to 1.15. Huge reductions. What about their body weight? We saw a large reduction in their body weight. A mean reduction in their BMI went from 27.2 down to 24.5. So you're probably wondering, what is it in this traditional diet that led to these very impressive results? Well, I did a bit of research. And when I actually looked into the literature a bit deeper, it appears that the indigenous population has always valued fat in the diet. This here is a witchetty grub, 67% fat and considered a delicacy. So when I've looked at the data from this study and I plotted it and I compared it to the NHMRC recommended diet, so this is a diet here that fits within their recommended macronutrient intake, I compared it to a typical high fat, low carbohydrate diet which I use for my patients and I think you can see that the diet used in this study is far, far closer to a low carbohydrate diet. It's almost opposite of the diet that's uh, suitable and recommended by the NHMRC.